There's been a lot of noise recently about the M1 iPad Pro not being able to fully replace your laptop or your computer because of its operating system limitations like iPadOS 15. But I, I beg to differ. Let's talk about it. So about a year ago, Apple actually put the M1 chip that they put in their MacBook Airs and their MacBook Pros, and they put it into their M1 iPad Pro lineup. So the 11 inch and the 12.9 inch, and they also added some mini LED technology to the 12.9 inch, which is amazing. But with the implementation of the M1, people assumed since we're getting a desktop class chip inside of the iPad Pros, that it would bring some sort of pro level implementation in terms of maybe some pro level apps, maybe some secondary monitor support, something special to differentiate that from the rest of the iPad lineup. And you guys know what happens when you assume, right? Leave a comment down below if you know what happens when you assume. But then lo and behold, iPad OS 15 came around after the M1 iPad Pro was released and there was no real innovation, there was no evolution of the operating system with iPad OS 15. So people either did one of two things. They returned their M1 iPad Pros and got themselves a cheaper iPad, or they just relegated their iPad Pro to a content consumption machine, maybe like an email machine, because they figured like, if I'm not getting pro apps, let me just stick with my usually cheaper MacBook Air to get all of my Mac OS operating system tasks done. And while the iPad Pro for everybody isn't their laptop replacement, for a lot of people, and I would say for 95% of people, it could really replace your laptop or your Mac OS computer or even your Windows computer if you use it the right way. So in this video, we're gonna talk about all the accessories that I use with the iPad Pro to give me my iPad Pro only experience, especially at a desk, and then also talk about the software that I also use to really give me a better experience overall and sometimes to avoid that mirror display and the lack of real external monitor support. So let's talk about the accessories first and let's get right into it. If you're planning on going full iPad Pro only and you want to have a desk setup, honestly the number one thing that I recommend people get is to get Apple's Magic Trackpad. Apple's Magic Trackpad is the best way to go from using your iPad maybe on your Magic Keyboard to using it at a desk because that Magic Trackpad acts exactly like the trackpad on the Magic Keyboard and lets you kind of use the iPad how it's intended to be used, which is very gesture based. Apple introduced real cursor support or I guess their version of cursor support on iPad OS. And ever since then, it's kind of let us use the iPad as a laptop a little bit more because we have mouse support and trackpad support. But in order to get the best one-to-one -one experience or the best way to experience that cursor support is to get yourself that external Magic Trackpad because that is how Apple intended the iPad to be used with gesture based controls. But after that item, after that product to be recommended, it's really up to you how you wanna set up your iPad Pro and your iPad Pro only setup. So what I have on my desk itself, first off, the desk I have is by Autonomous. I've had this for about three years now, almost at this point. It is a wonderful standing motorized desk with four different presets in order for you to save different height settings for yourself to sit and stand and maybe for a significant other or a roommate or somebody else that you're sharing that desk with to also sit and stand. It goes from I believe 29.5 inches all the way up to 49 inches. So even if you're like seven feet tall, you'll still have plenty of room to have this standing desk and it'll be at a good enough height for you to be comfortable when using that desk. But then on top of the desk, like I mentioned, I have that Magic Trackpad, which again is the number one product that I would recommend if you're doing an iPad only desk setup because everything else can be kind of replaced, swapped out and based on preference. So with the trackpad, alongside of that, I have a Satechi X1 Slim keyboard, which is very, very similar to Apple's Magic Keyboard, the compact one at least. It has the same chiclet style keyboard, it has the same clickiness, it's pretty much the same exact size. The only difference between this one and the Magic Keyboard that Apple sells is that this one charges via USB-C, which I'm all for, USB-C, all things, and it allows you to connect to up to three different devices. So you can connect it to a Mac computer, to your iPad, you know, to your Windows, up to three devices, and you can easily toggle between them right on the keyboard. And then next to that, I also have just a regular mouse because which I'm gonna show you on the software side with an application called Shift Screen, it's a little easier to use an actual physical mouse aside from a trackpad. But if you're able to have both of them, that is the best situation because, because you can use the mouse to do precise clicking when you're moving around applications like Excel, we need to be a little bit more accurate with where you're clicking and things like that. But then also use a trackpad for gesture-based controls to get you to the homepage, to get you into multitasking, to drop down the control center and things of that nature. So having them work together in unison is a perfect situation with whatever keyboard or Bluetooth keyboard you see fit. And then those things are actually sitting on an OrbiKey XL mat, which I absolutely love. I've been using it, again, this, been, this has been on there for over a year. And before that, I think I had like seven or eight different mats that I was going through because I just didn't really like them. 
This one has been perfect. I got the XL version. Keep in mind, if you do get the XL version, I usually opt for the XL versions of mats because usually they're a little bit smaller than I think. This one is a very big mat. So the XL version does fit nicely on this autonomous desk. But if you, have, if you have a smaller desk, go with the regular version. But what I like about this thing is that it's a little bit more than a mat. So it has the regular mat leather feel right on top of it. But also at the very top of the mat, you have this little lip this magnetic lip which lets you put things like maybe an apple pencil and since there is magnets down there for an apple pencil it's a perfect spot to put it because you just throw it on there and it's not going to really move because there are other magnets in there and then also it has a little cable organizer with magnets to let you slide one or two cables through i have a usb-c cable plugged through there any of my usb-c devices that i have laying around right now it's charging my google pixel 6 and then also with this mat there's actually a second layer to the mat so if you lift up the lip you can actually hide you know papers brochures little documents and things like that that slide right under Underneath to get them out of sight and out of mind but when you do need them you just flip that open again and the bottom of it is made out of felt so OrbiKey they've mastered the mat design I don't know how many more features you can throw into a mat without making it look weird but this is a perfect design in my opinion I love the color love the aesthetic love the function of it and again name another like desk mat that has multiple functions aside from being a desk mat and protecting your desk and if we keep going through the desk, I have a desk kind of stand or shelf that you can call it, just to rise up my monitor and my iPad a little bit better for viewing angles, especially when I'm standing up. That is by Grovemade. It's probably the most quality wood finish accessories that you can get for a desk setup. I have a few other things, but this one is by far the most used. Like from the moment I got it, I have not taken it off my desk and I absolutely love it because it also adds a nice little drawer in there for little things like pencils and like notepads and things like that. So on top of that, I actually have my BenQ monitor, my 32 inch BenQ monitor. And the reason I went with this one was twofold. Before that, I had an ultra widescreen one. When using with the iPad Pro, especially in regular mode with mirroring the display, I would get letterboxed in so badly that it just didn't make sense to have an ultra wide monitor with an iPad Pro setup. But with this BenQ monitor, the aspect ratio is a little bit taller. I believe it's a 16 by nine aspect ratio with this monitor. So it is a very tall monitor, it's not very wide, but for the iPad, it works very, very well because the iPad is a four by three aspect ratio. So the black bars on the side when you're mirroring this, the display are kind of mitigated and minimalized as much as possible. And it does take advantage of most of the BenQ screen. And then also I got it because it had built-in speakers and it had very good built-in speakers and I wanted that. With my last monitor, it had no built-in speakers. And if you know, and if you've used the iPad in the past with a secondary monitor, it defaults always to the speaker system inside of that monitor, regardless if that monitor has built-in speakers or not. So in my last situation, I had a ultra wide, I plugged it in via USB-C, and then it would default my sound into those speakers, but there was no speakers to be used. So the only way to bypass that is with Bluetooth headphones or a Bluetooth speaker. So being able to plug in with one cable, one USB-C cable to plug into my iPad Pro, it charges it, passes audio, passes video, and we're good to go. And you can see that my iPad is actually sitting on a magnetic stand by a company called Charge M Pro. Absolutely love this thing. It has kind of like that Pro Display XDR stand aesthetic. So it's a perfect fit. I have it for the 12.9 inch. They make it for the 11 inch as well. And it's such a nice form fitting design. It has the aluminum feel. The Apple aesthetic is hit perfectly. Cool to the touch, very quality. It gives you all the angles that you would need, especially for just a normal desk setup. So that is what it's sitting on. It's been sitting on there for a decent amount of time. And I don't really plan on taking it off unless I'm on the go. And then to slowly round things off on what I have on the desk, these aren't really accessories that you need to have an iPad Pro desk setup. But the next item is by a company called iSwift. It's just like a super smart version of a power strip. So this is by a company called iSwift, like I mentioned. It has three full outlets on the top of the actual thing, which is great to have. So if you need to plug in, you know, anything directly into power and you need more than just a normal wattage that's in there, you can easily do that. But then it also has a bunch of ports on the front side, which allows you to power your devices up to 65 watts. So you have one USB-C port, which does support up to 65 watt charging. You have another one which supports USB-C PD charging, so up to 18 watts. And then you have a USB-A port, which supports up to 10 watts. And then to the very right of my desk, this has nothing to do with the iPad. I just really like it a lot. It is a two-in-one charger by Satechi. I'm looking to actually get their three-in-one charger, but this one's great if you have AirPods and a iPhone 12 or newer because it runs with MagSafe, it works with MagSafe, and it charges your iPhone up to 7.5 watts, doesn't get hot at all, charges super efficiently, and that's where my iPhone usually lives when I'm at my desk because it also lets you kind of tilt it a little bit. So if you wanna like FaceTime while your iPhone's charging or move it into landscape mode to watch a video while you're like having lunch or something, by all means, that's possible with this stand. So now let's talk about the software and how iPadOS 15 runs on an external monitor. So as you guys know, natively, Apple only supports mirroring of devices. There are some applications which allow you to use the display a little bit differently. For instance, if I'm editing a video in LumaFusion, I can actually use the entire display of my BenQ monitor to be a viewfinder to see exactly what's going on and then still edit on the side on the iPad Pro. Now, it's not a perfect implementation, but there is, again, a different use case and just it being mirrored. I wish I was able to maybe bring LumaFusion onto my larger display and then use my iPad to see what I was editing. 
But again, that doesn't, that's not really the case right now with LumaFusion, but there are a lot of applications that do similar things like that, right? So for instance, Netflix, if you watch a video, it'll take up the entire screen as opposed to just the mirror display with the, with the letterboxing. So if you watch content on an external display from your iPad Pro, it'll still take up the entire screen, which is great to hear at least, right? But one application which I've used a decent amount over the last two years, and you guys have probably seen it on the channel before, is an app called Shift Screen. Shift Screen is kind of what I think Apple might be moving towards, kind of like a Mac OS Lite situation. But what Shift Screen does is it allows you to use your iPad Pro kind of like a Chromebook. The first thing it does is it allows you to use up the entire secondary monitor, right? So you do kind of mirror the display, but you can still use Shift Screen maybe in multitasking mode with two side-by-side -side apps, but it'll still take up the entire BenQ monitor, which is great to have. But it takes up the entire screen and think about it again as a Chromebook kind of OS for your iPad. So it lets you surf the internet, sign into Slack, si like sign into your Google Drive, sign into your calendars and things like that. It's all, you know, web-based stuff. There's no applications that you can download on it, but everything kind of works as advertised, right? You can resize windows, have as many internet browsing windows as you would want. You have different desktops that you can decide to have. So you can have up to eight different desktops and it works with up to your 49 inch like ultra wide monitor curved display. So if you guys have a situation like that and you want to use, you know, your iPad as a Chromebook, by all means, go for it. But again, it's all web-based. There's no applications you can download on the shift screen. It's not, it's not really a Samsung DeX because DeX, you can actually download physical applications. But again, this is all web-based. So if your work is completely web-based, right? If your CRM is online, you know, if you use QuickBooks online, if you use Microsoft Word online, then this is gonna work. It all works very well. I haven't had any issues with it. It doesn't restart or anything like that. Like it works exactly what it's intended to do, but don't expect it to be like a complete operating system. Think about it as a web-based way of being able to have floating windows, multiple tabs open at once, have Safari open with a Google Doc, with a Google Slides, like with Microsoft, you know, online, things like that. And it works well. So I'm happy with Shift Screen and it's really kind of helped alleviate that that mental block of like, maybe the iPad Pro isn't really ready to be your, you know, your only computing device. But again, like I told you guys in the very beginning of this video, I beg to differ. The iPad Pro for me has been my most used device by far. And when it comes to the YouTube channel, everything that you see on the YouTube channel has done on the iPad Pro from editing the video, editing the thumbnail, scripting all the YouTube videos, and then uploading it to YouTube, doing all the administrative stuff like tagging, uploading the thumbnail, and making sure that it's monetized and things like that. So everything from a YouTube channel perspective, even on the financial side, I use Google Docs, in order to keep track of all the sponsors that are coming in. So overall, I think the iPad Pro, depending on your situation, can and will be your only computer if you want it to be. There's a little bit of a learning curve sometimes, especially if you're coming from a Mac OS desktop class experience. Sometimes if you wanna get from point A to point B, that route to get to point B is a little bit different on the iPad than it is on Mac OS, but you'll still get to that end result of that point B. It's just a matter of, are you willing to learn something a little bit different in order to use probably the coolest tech device of all time? But that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. I just wanted to give a little bit of insight. It's been about a year since I updated my iPad Pro only desk setup. And I just wanted to share with everybody that it is still possible. Even though iPad OS 15 wasn't all that it was touted to be, I don't even remember what the main feature was because 15.4 brought universal control. I think, what, what did we get, Scribble with iPad OS 15? So, and we got rid of the today view, which I wish hopefully makes a comeback with iPad OS 16. But I do believe iPads with iPadOS 15 are more than capable of getting all of your work done if you want it to be that way. You know, if you want to stay with a traditional route of a macOS computer, by all means, it's also a great device. I own both of them, but I prefer to use the iPad Pro whenever I can. So leave a comment down below. I'm curious to know how many people use their iPad as their only device. And also, what are some of the things that maybe are missing from the iPad Pro, aside from secondary monitor support, because that's what really, because that is what everybody really wants. But name some things down below that are like, maybe some of the biggest hindrances that are making you not go fully on the iPad Pro. Is it maybe a certain set of applications that don't work? Maybe the screen is too small, the multitasking isn't great. You know, leave some comments down below. I'm always curious. And maybe we'll make a follow-up video kind of answering all those questions for everybody. But if you guys made it to the end, thank you so much. Leave a little dolphin in the comments below so I know that you made it to the end. And if you want to watch some more iPad-related videos or if you want to venture into the Mac OS video world, we have some of that too on the channel. Click on one of these videos right here. But I'm out of here. Peace.